Hi, my name is Curtis, and welcome to another Marvel Epic Collection Frequently Asked Question. In my last video, the question was, what is exactly found inside an Epic Collection? And in this video, we're going to talk about what is not found in an Epic Collection. What are the things that the Epic Collections skip over or purposely not include? These videos are brought to you by the Epic Marvel Podcast. This is my very own podcast where we talk about the Epic Collections issue by issue, going through each one in great detail. So uh, if you haven't checked that out, I really encourage you to do so. The mandate of the Epic Collections has always been to try and collect all of the issues from number one, going all the way to somewhere and toward the end. So when we talk about the things that the Epic Collections don't include, the ones that affect the unbrokenness of, of the, the Epic Collections the most are licensed characters. And so we've seen already in Power Man Iron Fist Epic Collection number two, issue number 73 is not there. And that's because it includes an appearance from Rom, the Space Knight. There is a two-part story that is told throughout the pages of Rom number 23 and Power Man and Iron Fist number 73. These two issues are not in there because Rom is a character based on a toy created by Parker Brothers. There's some sort of legal red tape that is preventing Marvel from licensing Rom, and so his appearances, they're not in the epic collections, they're not in the essentials. It, this, this story is just not there. So you'd be best getting the single issues and then kind of slotting them in there with your epic collections. Now what the epic collection does do is it provides the B story pages that don't have anything to do with ROM. Those are the ones that have a lot of the actual continuity story parts that, that travel through issue to issue. So that part is good. And they also include a one page text recap so that you still know what you missed. And I guess maybe it's better than nothing, but it's there for what it's worth. While we haven't had any other volumes of the Epic Collections yet that are skipping issues like this, I can think of Incredible Hulk number 296 and Marvel 2 and 1 number 99. Both of these feature ROM and will most likely not be included in the Epic Collections. And should there ever be a, an Epic Collection line of a Marvel team up, I'm sure we're also not going to see issue number 74, which includes the cast of Saturday Night Live. This issue was skipped in Essentials, and I'm guessing it'll probably be skipped in the Epics as well. Epic Collections also skip reprint issues. A lot of the early annuals from the 1960s just used the annual to, to reprint stories, since reprints weren't really a thing that happened back then. Uh, there's also a case in this Black Panther epic, Jungle Action number 23 is a reprint, I guess for scheduling reasons, they had to reprint an issue of Daredevil. That issue is not included here. The cover is because it's original, but uh, it skips from Jungle Action number 22 and goes right to number 24. In the early days of Marvel, uh, they had to bundle a lot of their characters together. There were certain restrictions in their distribution agreement that meant that they uh, could only distribute a certain number of titles per month. So by combining their books to share characters, they were able to get all their characters out there in the number of, of comics they were allowed to print every month. And so something like Tales to Astonish had stories from Namor the Submariner and Incredible Hulk. Well, the Namor epics are only going to have the Namor stories and the Hulk epics are only going to have the Hulk stories. In the case of Thor, Journey into Mystery was the name of the title. Thor had the main feature, but there were also kind of generic horror or sci-fi stories in the back, and those stories are not included in the Thor epic collections. And eventually Thor would go on to become the title character, like they changed the name from Journey into Mystery into Thor, and the, the backup stories became Tales of Asgard. And once that happened, they started including those in the epic collections, because of course they do have something to do with Thor now. However, once you get to volume three of the Thor epic collections, the Tales of Asgard backup stories turn into Inhumans backup stories. That runs from Thor number 146 to 152. Those Inhuman stories are not included in the epic collections because they no longer have to do with Thor. But they can be found in this large collection called Inhumans, The Origin of the Inhumans. 
I don't know if this is intentional or not, but the Epic Collections have kind of been shying away from more of the mature content. A lot of the titles like uh, Tomb of Dracula and uh, Werewolf by Night, those monster stories, they aren't Epic Collections, they're complete collections, and I wonder if that's because of the mature content of those titles. Not including Conan, there's only really one example of the Epic Collections that has mature content, and that is the the Wolverine volume called Blood Debt, and it has a parental advisory warning on the back of it. And that's probably just because as further you get in the timeline, the Comic Code Authority stops being relevant, and in fact they lose it all together, and so comics start having more mature content. Back in the 70s, Marvel produced a lot of black and white magazines, and the magazines, because they were actually magazines and not comic books, they were able to do stuff and not worry about the comic code. And Iron Fist had a bunch of stories in the Deadly Hands of Kung Fu magazine. And they are a little bit more mature. They're not in the epic collections. There is a different collection called Iron Fist Master of Kung Fu and you can find those stories uh, in there. There are some exceptions. Moon Knight has some of the magazine stories. There are some of the bizarre adventures or the epic illustrated uh, ish, uh, stories that are found in Silver Surfer or X-Men or wherever. They are generally speaking not mature. They're family friendly, so they're okay. The Epic Collection also likes to be able to provide a good reading experience that tells the character story in full. So there are some volumes like Silver Surfer and this one here, Black Widow, where they take excerpts of different stories that have to do with the character and, and kind of mush them all together. Black Widow, this first volume here, is mostly issues of Avengers, but they haven't included the full issues. They're just the Black Widow relevant storylines and they tie them all together and so they don't include the full issues. There are also times when the Epic Collections don't include stories, when the story is just kind of larger than life and really, really big. In the late 90s, all of the X titles were really tight together in continuity, and so Wolverine at that point was almost treated like a tie-in to the X-Men stories, whatever was happening over there. And so in this volume, there's a huge story involving Apocalypse gathering 12 mutants together in order to, you know, destroy the world or something, and Wolverine is caught in the middle of it, but they don't include all of the X-Men chapters because, first of all, that would take way too much space, and second, it takes the focus off of Wolverine. And so they only have, of course, the Wolverine issues in here. So in this book, practically in front of every single issue in this book, there's a text recap to let us know what's happening in the pages of X-Men so that we are caught up to speed. Not the best reading experience in that sense, but it is what it is. Uh, the biggest thing I want to talk about here is actually the annuals. The annuals are considered the regular part of the publication history of the characters, so they are included in the epic collections, but there are times when other annuals are included as well. In the late 80s and 90s, Marvel had, a, had the idea to make stories that traveled through a bunch of different annuals that happened that year. For instance, there is a story called Life Form that takes place in Daredevil, and in Hulk, and in Punisher, and in Silver Surfer. The, the one character tells this long story throughout the four annuals. The whole thing is collected in the Daredevil epic collection called Heart of Darkness. They include the Daredevil annual with all of the backup stories, because there were always backup stories in the annuals. And it includes the other three chapters, but it doesn't include those backup stories from those other chapters. So for instance, in this Silver Surfer epic collection called Thanos Quest, the Lifeform chapter is included in this book and all of the uh, backup stories that are in that annual as well, but no other chapters. And that works because these characters don't really cross over in the storyline. They are actually self-contained stories and it's just the main kind of villain character that goes from character to character. So it's okay that we're getting only one chapter in this epic collection. But what about the annual storylines where the characters are present through the entire thing? Incredible Hulk Ghost of the Past has a story called The Secret Defenders, where all of the original Defenders kind of get back together again. The whole story is told in this one volume through the chapters in Incredible Hulk, Doctor Strange, Namor the Submariner, and Silver Surfer. 
and we haven't seen epic collections yet that co contain the other annual so we don't know how they're going to split it up but i suspect that maybe we'll see just the one chapter with a text recap in the case of this X-Men epic collection called Mutant Genesis, there are two annual stories that cross over through the various annuals. One's called Kings of Pain and the other's called The Killing Stroke. This is a weird one because all of the chapters of Killing Stroke are included in this epic collection, but only two of the chapters of Kings of Pain are included. It's, it's very strange, and I don't exactly know how they're going to do that in the other books, but we'll find out whenever they're released. The last thing I want to talk about are the stories that are really, really large and then the epic collections have devoted an entire volume to them. The two main examples are Maximum Carnage and Operation Galactic Storm. These are 19 parts, I think, each, and they are all included in full in these volumes. They're not made up of one title, but a bunch of different titles. So. This Avengers story is made up of chapters from Avengers, West Coast Avengers, Quasar, Wonder Man, Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America. We're not going to get all 19 parts reprinted in all of those books. That's just ridiculous. So, well, and we've already seen it. Uh, if you have the epic collection called Blood and Glory, only the Captain America issues are found in this one with text recaps filling in uh, the spaces so that we know what's going on. Same with this issue of Iron Man. Only the Iron Man Operation Galactic Storm chapters are in this book here with text recaps. So if you're only collecting Iron Man, it's kind of a shame because you don't get the full story. That's true. You'll have to buy that Avengers book. But for those of us who are collecting all of the epics, that's good because we don't need the full story like six times or whatever it's going to be. For Maximum Carnage, if there are ever spectacular Spider-Man or Web of Spider-Man epic collections, I would guess that they will only have those specific chapters and not the full story and they'll leave that up to this collection to uh, fill in the gaps well that's my video for today i hope you enjoyed it you can check me out on facebook on instagram and on twitter and you can uh check out also my podcast at epicmarvelpodcast.com and if you have any questions any more questions or anything you think i got wrong or missed out please leave me a comment here i'd be happy to answer any questions you have Thanks for checking out my video. I'll be back with another frequently asked question soon.